Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Physics Calculus, and we're in Unit 3 Dynamics, and this is Part 1. Uh, so we're going to be looking at Newton's first law of motion today, free body diagrams, Newton's second law of motion, and equilibrium. So let's get to it. Um, what do we know about Newton's first law of motion? Well, this is talking about that the velo our velocity will remain constant unless acted upon by a net force, which means we'll have a constant velocity of zero or a constant velocity of five meters per second or whatever it is unless we're acted upon by a net force. And when we have a net force act upon us, our object will accelerate. Now, that ex the resistance to changing its motion of velocity or its acceleration is what we call inertia. And of course, mass is a measurement of an object's inertia. And so that is Newton's basis, which was what we call Newton's first law. And it comes down into three different things, which is all equilibrium. And so the first equilibrium that we're going to talk about is static equilibrium. And static equilibrium, of course, is when the net force and the net torque on an object is zero and the object is at rest. And that's obviously why we call it static. Uh, the next is called mechanical equilibrium. And that's where the net force and the net torque on an object is zero, but the object is not necessarily at rest. And so that's how it differs from static equilibrium. And the last one is what we call translational equilibrium. Okay, Translational equilibrium is the net force on an object which is zero. Okay, And that's one we're somewhat used to at times. And so let's take a look at a translational equilibrium problem. And this is, you can see, obviously, we have a, a, a traffic light hanging with two different, suspended from two different cords. We're going to call one of the cords T1 and one of the cords T2. And so what do we have here is we have to make sure we take a look at its free body diagram in, in all cases. And of course, we have a mass times gravity of our object um, from the center of mass of that object, which would be 10 kilograms 10 times uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. And we also have a tension one and we have a tension two. And so tension one, tension two. And I also want you to see is this tension one and tension two are broken up into components, okay? Tension one is going to be this, what we call tension one sine opposite of that 60 degrees and tension one cosine. Whereas the other, the tension two is gonna be tension two sine opposite of that 30 degrees tension to cosine, okay? And so we have to take a look at each one of these translational equilibrium problems in just looking at the X and the Y. And obviously it is not moving, therefore all of our forces in the X are canceling out, all of our forces in the Y are canceling out. So if we simply just look at the X, what do we know is the tension of one cosine of 60 degrees is gonna be equal, that vector will be equal and opposite of tension to cosine of 30 degrees. And in that case, we now know a relationship between uh, tension one and tension two. And what we would could say is tension one equals tension two, if we do our mathematics, times 1.73. That is what cosine of 30 degrees divided by cosine of 60 degrees would be. Now, if we look in the y direction here, in the y direction, we, our tension one sine of 60 degrees plus our tension to sine of our 30 degrees will be equal and opposite to that mass times gravity. Okay, and so we have, we know what mass times gravity is. We have 10 kilogram traffic light times 9.8 meters per second squared. That gives us our, um, our force of gravity or our weight. And of course, we know what tension one is right here. Tension one equals T2 times 1.73. And therefore, we can find what T2 is. Once we know what T2 is, T2 ends up being, when we work out all of our mathematics, approximately 49 Newtons, which means we can plug that back in and find out what T1 is. And T1 ends up being about 84.9, almost 85 Newtons. And so that is, how we would take a look at one of these translational equilibrium problems, okay? So uh, as we move on uh, to Newton's second law, uh, this is all based upon Newton's second law. Really, there's no Newton's first, second, and third law. We like to split it up, but they're all 
related to each other, including Aiden's zero law of motion, which is those objects are stupid, okay, and they only know what forces they're immediately being acted upon. And so uh, the net force equals the sum of all forces, which is equal to mass times acceleration. Actually, Newton's second law really is the acceleration equals the net force divided by the mass. And what you're going to do in every Newton's second law of motion problem is, number one, draw a free body diagram. Number two, break any forces into x's and y's. Write your expressions for the net force in x and y, and then solve away on that guy. So here, let's take a look at one of these types of Newton's second law type of problems. And so we have two different objects here. Okay, these objects don't know about each other. They're stupid. They are Newton's, well, we would say Aiton's zero law of motion. But that top object, that top object, if we think of what's happening with that top object, we can say the net force, the net force is always equal to ma. Okay, that net force is always equal to mass times that vector of acceleration. Okay, and what is happening upon that first, that 200 kilogram mass? That 200 kilogram mass has a tension one going up and a tension two going down. It doesn't know that the 100 kilogram mass is there. All it knows is that it's being affected by the tension two. There's also the force of gravity, the mass times gravity on this object as well. And so what we have here is we have T1 is going to be positive because I'm going to call up positive minus the mass times gravity minus T2 because T2 is working against it there. And so we plug in what we know. We know we have uh, 200 is our mass, 200 kilograms. We know our acceleration and our problem is one meter per second squared. And so the tension one, we're going to call T1, we know our force of gravity equals 200 times 9.8 meters per second squared, that's the weight, minus T2. That's as much as we know. All right. So now let's take a look at that second, uh, that second object, that 100 kilogram mass. Now this 100 kilogram mass is being affected by T2. It's also being affected by its mass times gravity. So what do we have for this one is we have F net, and I'll do this one in green, equals mass of acceleration, okay? And T2 is working at the positive minus its weight of mass times gravity. And so we have 100 times his acceleration, and this acceleration is still one. It's the same, it has the same acceleration as the 200 kilogram mass as well. We have T2 minus 100 times 9.8, okay? And so what do we find? We can figure out what T2 is simply by a, a little bit of algebra. And we find T2 is 1,080 newtons, okay? 1,080 newtons. And so what do we do with that T2? We bring that guy right up into this equation and we're able to figure out what T1 is. And T1 ends up becoming 3,240 newtons. And you can see, this tension one is greater than tension two, not simply because of the greater mass that it has, it's that it's being affected by T2 as well as its own weight, and T2 is being affected, or that second object is being affected by its weight as well, okay? So I hope that problem helped out a little bit. Uh, when we take a look at banked curves, the, these are things that you're going to want to practice, okay, is what's happening with a banked curve. And so when we have a car or something like that banking at a curve of at angle theta, and this object is right here, uh, we can say this object has, if we think about its free body diagram, it has a mass times gravity, its weight coming down. Uh, it may have friction on it. Uh, it also has a normal force as well. Now, what I want you to see is this, this weight is going to be affected by, um, by this angle that it is on. And so what we have to do is we have to split up into X's and Y's. And what we call this one right here, now the angle, you can see the angle of the band curve is the same geometrically as the angle of this small little triangle. But this, th therefore this, what we call the force 
perpendicular is going to be equal to mg, that's the weight, cosine of theta. Whereas this right here, this, this force, what we call force parallel, is equal to mg sine of theta. And so what we have here is we have a Newton's second law problem. We know, we know that this, uh, if it's going around a band curve and it's going around a, 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 a curve with a, in a kind of a circular curve, we know the sum of all forces, that net force, which is equal to ma, is actually equal to the centripetal force. Therefore, this net force is going to be equal to mv squared over the radius of that curve. And what is that equal to? The force that is pointing towards the center, which is equal to the n. You can see this normal force, this normal force sine of theta, because you can do the same exact type of triangle with this normal force that you did with this uh, force of gravity is this is going to have a x component and a y component and here is where your angle will be which means this force towards the center is going to be equal to the normal force sine of theta. Now we got to figure out what this normal force is. So how do we figure out what this normal force is? Well we have to go to take a look at this normal force is going to be equal and opposite to that force right there, that force perpendicular, okay? And so that force, or we could say even this normal force in this direction is going to be equal and opposite to that, the weight, the mass times gravity. So what do we know is the normal force, cosine of theta, is going to be equal to the mass times the gravity. Therefore, we can uh, use these two equations. We can plug them in. We know the normal force equals, uh, if I erase this guy, the normal force is going to be equal to mg divided by cosine of theta. And if I bring this guy right in there, you will see we will have mv squared over r equals mg sine over cosine. I hope you can see that's tangent, isn't it? Okay, so we have mv, mv squared over r equals mg over sine theta over cosine theta, or tangent of theta. So uh, I'll do that for you. mv squared over r equals mg, and I'm going to call that tangent of theta because that was sine over cosine. Hopefully you can see the masses cancel out. And what we have here is velocity squared over gravity times the radius is equal to tangent of theta there. Okay, if you want to know the angle, you do the arctangent. If you want to know the velocity, you would just uh, push the gr over and square root that guy to find that, um, to find that velocity. Okay, and that is banked curves. You're going to have to want to practice those guys as well. Um, if we go to kind of graphical interpretations of Newton's second law, uh, graphical interpretations of Newton's second law, you can see we want to know where the, at what time is the force exerted on the plane's engines the greatest? If we want to know where the force will be the greatest, I have to know where the acceleration is greatest, where, which means where will the slope of this line, the acceleration, be the greatest? You can see the slope of the line is the greatest tangent to the curve at about three seconds or so. And so that is kind of a graphical interpretation of Newton's second law. And another thing we want to practice is a differential equation using forces. You're going to want to practice this, okay? And so here we have, we have a force in some direction, okay? And we're going to call it maybe the force in the x direction or something like that, equals some constant times time, which means our force is varying here, okay, according to time. So if the force is varying according to time, we're going to want to use our calculus, we're going to use our, want to use our differential equations, and what do we know about force? Force equals mass times acceleration. And so what do we know about acceleration? Acceleration is the differential of velocity with respect to time, okay, equals CT. And so what we have here is we have a differential, don't we? 
just like in calculus class. So we have dv equals c over m t dt. And you can see, what do we have here? We have a perfect, a perfect place in order to do a, uh, an integral. Okay, and so I have an integral on both sides. You can see on the integral on the left-hand side, and I'm going to move over here, is we're going from velocity initial to velocity final, and that is dv. Okay, the integral on the other side, we know our c and our m are constants, and so what are we going to do? We're going to go obviously from time zero to time t, and of course we have t dt. Okay, and we can take the integral here. Uh, here, the integral of 1 is, of course, v for velocity, and we have v final, and we have v initial. Uh, we have our constants of c over m, and what's the integral of t? The integral of t would be uh, 1 half, we have our c over m, and we have t squared. Okay, and obviously we're going to go from t final from 0 there. Okay, and so what we have here is uh, obviously if we're starting from an initial velocity of zero, that initial velocity is zero, so we could just call this final velocity. And final velocity equals, of course, ct squared over 2m. And that is what our final velocity would be at any point in time under a varying force. Okay? I hope uh, this helped. This was the first time, first segment of dynamics. Have a good day. I'll catch you later.